Bhagavad Gita, verse 2.17. You should know that which pervades the entire body, the imperishable soul, to be indestructible. No one is able to destroy the imperishable soul. Sar Ardavarshini Nabavo Vidyate Sataha That which is eternal cannot be destroyed. Sri Bhagavan speaks this verse beginning with Avinashi to clarify this truth. The fundamental nature, Swarupa, of the Jiva is such that it pervades the whole body. One may question how the consciousness of the Jiva, which only pervades the individual body and is therefore limited in size, cannot be temporary. Sri Krishna says, No, it is not so. There is evidence of this in both the Shrutis and the Smritis. The Shrutis state, Sukshmanam api aham jivaha. Among subtle objects, I am the jiva. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.16.11 The Mandaka Upanishad 3.1.9 also states, Ejo nur atma chetasa vidita vyo yasmin pranam panchara samvivesha. The atma is very minute. It can only be realized in a pure heart. The soul remains situated in the body, separate from the five types of life errors, such as prana, apana, Jnana, Samana and Udana. In the Svetasvatara Upanishad 5.9 it is said Balakra, Shata, Bhagasya, Shatata, Kalpitasya, Ja, Bhagu Jivaha, Sa, Vigyayaha, Sa, Janatyaya, Kalpati. One should know that the Jeev Atma is the size of one ten thousandth the tip of a hair. Also the Aitariya Upanishad 5.8 states Arakra Madruhi Avarupi Drishtaha. It is seen that the Jiva has an extremely subtle form. The above statements from the Shrutis prove that the individual soul or Jiva Atma is atomic in size. It is very subtle. Just as the entire body can be nourished by applying a potent herb or placing a precious gem on the head or chest, similarly, the Jeev Atma is able to pervade the entire body, although it is situated in one place. There is no difficulty in reconciling this. Being bound by material designations, the soul enters various species and wanders in different heavens and hells. Dattatreya has also verified this in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.9.20. Jena samsarati puman. The Jeev Atma wanders throughout the material world. The present verse describes that the Jeev Atma has the quality of being able to travel to any place. There is nothing irreconcilable about this. The Jeev Atma is called Avyayasa, eternal. This is also verified in the Shrutis. Nityo Nityanam Chetanash Chetananam Eko Bahunam Yo Vidati Kaman Katha Upanishad 2.2.13 He is the Supreme Eternal amongst all eternal entities, the supreme conscious being among all conscious beings. Even though he is only one, he performs so many activities and fulfills the desires of all living entities. If we view this verse from another perspective, we can say that all three, the body, the soul and the super-soul, Paramatma, 
are seen in all human beings, birds, animals and so forth. The natures of the body and the soul have been explained in the previous verse. Nasato vidyate bhavo, Gita 2.16 So what is the nature of the third entity, Paramatma? To answer this, Sri Bhagavan speaks this verse beginning with the word Avinashi. The word tu is used to indicate a different context. This material world has come into existence only because Maya and the chief Atma are by nature fundamentally different from Paramatma. Sarardavarshini Prakashikariti There are two indestructible truths. One is the individual atomic conscious jiva, and the other is the source of the manifestation of all jiva atmas and their controller, namely the supersoul or paramatma. The one paramatma is present as a witness in both inert and conscious objects. The jivas are unlimited in number. An individual Atma exists separately in each gross body. The individual Jiva in each body experiences happiness and misery. The Supreme Absolute Truth, the Paramatma, is situated in the body only as a witness and is not affected by the happiness and distress of the individual Jiva. In this verse, the nature of the indestructible jiva has been described. How is it that the atomic jiva atma, being situated in one part of the body, is experienced throughout the entire body? Sri Krishna is answering this question in the present verse. His statement above is verified by the Vedanta Sutra 2.3.22. Avirodhash Chandanavat. This means that just a single drop of sandalwood paste applied to one part of the body cools the whole body. Similarly, the chief Atma, situated in one part of the body, is experienced throughout the entire body. This is also verified in the Smritis. Anumadropi ayam jivaha svadehe vyapya tishtati yatha vyapya sharirani hari chandana viprushaha. Just as a drop of sandalwood paste applied to one part of the body gives pleasure to the whole body, similarly, the jiv atma, being situated in one part of the body, pervades the whole body. If the question is asked, in which part of the body does the Jeev Atma reside? The answer is, within the heart. Ridi hi esha admiti sat prashni shruti This is also stated in the Vedanta Sutra 2.3.24 Gunat va lokavat like light, the Jeev Atma, by its quality, pervades the whole body. Although the Jeev Atma is atomic, by its quality of consciousness, it pervades the entire body. Just as the sun, situated in one part of the sky, illuminates the whole universe, similarly, the Jeev Atma also pervades the whole body. This has been stated by Sri Bhagavan himself in the Gita, 13.33.